Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Alconnan. Welcome to Thursday's edition of Pre-Market Info. There it is. That's going to be your mover on the day. Facebook up a whopping 23% now on their earnings report. Up $6. Nobody, I'm telling you, nobody expected this big of a move here on this stock, Joel. The option pricing was way out of whack. They were expecting a move of 6 or 7 maybe 7.5%. And we got to move at 23%. Some option writers are getting murdered here today, and some people are getting rich too. Yeah, did I? I told you. I told you that Facebook was going to rally. <laughs> you told us. <laughs> yeah, we wish. Uh, I had no idea that it had this much gas in it. Obviously, the numbers: 19 cents versus 14, 1.81 billion versus 1.61 billion. So they beat on the top, beat on the bottom. Uh, I was all. They're talking mobile. They're starting to figure it out a little bit here. News feed ads are thinking going to be uh, the main driver here uh, going forward. So again, they're. They're saying they're figuring out mobile. I've always just kept thinking, you know, I don't like the fact that they're sticking mobile ads in front of everybody's faces, but they're clicking them, and they're making money here off of it. So uh, what can you say here? This is blowing through every resistance level that we can see pretty much here. Joel will find some level for you. But uh, right. I even tried, Joel. I was trying it just in the pre-market here. I thought that old high, 32 and a half, the high that we had back on the first, I was like, maybe it stalls there. I tried to short in front of it, 32.35, 32.45. It just blew through it. I had to cover 32.60, lost a quick 20, 25 cents on it. So I guess that's what I get for trying to st stop a rocket ship here. I think I'm, you know, that trading, I'm going to be able to, you know, call the top, and that's just impossible right. to do. Well, unfortunately, I've been bullish since the IPO. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Joel wrote that article before it came out when it was 42. Yeah. He's like, oh, this thing could you know, open and rally. And <laughs> it was like yeah. a little bit I, of a bad call on your part. But you stuck with it, Joel. You stuck with it. It's yeah. coming around. <laughs> yep, I was a moron. Put more on and more on as it went down. But uh, I still think that 3260, 3270 uh, level is going to be relevant here. Um, you had several month, you had three monthly tops in that area after the IPO. Uh, we did sneak up to 32.98. You got a round number there at 33. So, boy, I tell you, if it can continue through that 33 number, I saw another monthly high at 33.45. But uh, perhaps a safer way to trade it, trade it uh, would be, you know, let it float up here in the mid, you know, to high 32s, and then if it gets some momentum and comes back down through 32.50. Uh, you know, then you can catch it when it's going down, as opposed to uh, catch it when it's going up. I mean, that's thirty-two, thirty-two ninety-eight pre-market high. You're exactly right. It's all about the momentum. Look how quickly that thing ran straight up. Then it consolidates and sells off a bit. Find some more consolidation, then run steeps, running straight up here in the pre-market. So that's what you got to be looking is riding the momentum here a little bit instead of you know trying to stop and be a contrarian and pick tops and bottoms like I just did. Um, Got to talk about the options here a little bit too because, man, they were selling these calls way too cheap. The 29 calls for this week's expiration were going for 21 cents before the report. The 30s were going for a dime, and the 31s were going for 4 cents. So just looking at those 29s um, that were offered at 21 cents, those are now worth $3.65 of intrinsic value on those things. Some people are absolutely murdered there. I think there was 23,000 open contracts on that too. So you're talking, you know, about 2.3 million shares worth. You're talking basically of a wealth transfer just on 29's contracts of like 8 to 10 million dollars. So just on the 29, so you're seeing millions of dollars change hands, and people who are writing options are just crawling under their desk in, in disbelief here because uh, it just wasn't priced in for this kind of move. But this in this day and age, and with all the crashes that we've had in the past, I mean, they, you know, they had to be hedging with some stock. I mean, there's no way that you would. I mean, you know, I know we trade pretty conservatively, Maybe. but you know, going in, uh, going in with earnings on any kind of stock like that, selling stuff for a nickel, you know, you know, you definitely know what your rewards going to be. Uh, selling nickel. those things, you have a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's your reward. And Three dollars so and sixty-five cents. Yeah. I always wondered who sells those options. If you hedge it, it's one thing somehow hedging it. But there's people that just sell those things naked, and they just see, oh, it's free money. You know, it's never going to get there. It's just a free nickel, free nickel, free nickel, and that works ninety-nine percent of the time. But the one percent of the time it doesn't work, right. this happens, and it eats away all the profits. Um, I used to actually try to play that strategy a little bit on earnings plays, buy them, you know, deep out of the money on smaller stocks. Usually not something like 
like a face buck. And uh, I, I actually had a few, uh, you know, you'd lose like a 9 out of 10, but that one you went on uh, makes up for the 9 losers, you know, buying nickel options or options under a 10 cents, those cheap out of the money. So there is some plays in there, and I bet you next time they won't be writing these Facebooks quite as cheap. <laughs> Right, and uh, just uh, adding further significance on the weekly, it illustrates it a little bit better. Uh, back in early 2012, we bumped our head up against this 3250 level. So I keep an eye on it. You know, uh, not only early in the trading here, but uh, to see if the stock can actually close above 3250. Analyst upgrades this morning to Facebook, BTIG upgrading, JMP Securities, Evercore all upgrading the stock. The price target raises. All of them are coming out raising the price target. JP Morgan raising up to 44 from 35 cantor raising it up from 40 to or 240 from 35 bank <laughs> america from 36 to 40 wells fargo from 30 to 32 they're raising the price target up to 36 to 38 and goldman sachs at a price target of 40 they had the highest price target coming in from what i can see and they're raising it up to 46 so i guess uh goldman a little bit right on this one with that 40 dollars price target looked ridiculous yesterday uh looks a little bit more uh when they're raising up to 46 now more reality here today what a move for facebook congratulations yeah. if you're wow. on the stock I wasn't. I wish I was. <laughs> You're not shorted, though. No, not shorted. I have no position you in were, Facebook. You were shorted. But you're I, I've shorted played it a few different today. ways, but, um, you know, I've been saying all along, I don't like the fact those mobile ads are in your face, but they're clicking them, so I'm going to sit back. You can't play, like, trying to fundamentally figure out this market sometimes and say, okay, I've got the fundamentals figured out, now I'm going to put the trade on make money. This is a market that just rides momentum. It's a market that sometimes doesn't make sense. We saw that, you know, when Travelers Group comes out, blows the numbers away and goes down three bucks on it. Um, it's hard to really apply fundamentals to this market. It is a crazy momentum driven technical trading market and you can't argue with the technical. So even though despite me, I don't love the fundamentals at Facebook, I think it's overpriced. I'm not going to try to short it. Uh, not for anything more than a trade anyways uh, because uh, it's just got too much momentum here going again and it's hard to fight that momentum in this market. With the market, do it the spoos down seven two here. Uh, yeah, you know the spoos. Yeah, the spoos. We should talk about the market just briefly here because Facebook's getting all the attention. The SP futures are down seven points here, Joel. Uh, it's a follow through from yesterday. We talked about a potential double top at sixteen ninety five five. Uh, we tried to call the double top a couple times. I guess we might have it right <laughs> this time at sixteen ninety five five because it's 20 points off of that level there now. So you had a shot there yesterday in the 1693, 1694s, even 1695 area. And we sold off significantly throughout the day. I know how I love my two-day move, so I actually did come in short a little bit here today. Wish I was more short. Uh, but regardless, the stocks um, are down another 7.5 here this morning, following through on yesterday's uh, little sell-off. Yeah, it was actually, uh, if you include the high from Monday, you had a triple top from 94 and a quarter, 95 and a half. And then you took out the lows, you had a double bottom from Monday and Tuesday, 1685 and a half, 86. Uh, don't think we're going to get up there today. The relevant number here this morning is 1677 and a quarter. That was yesterday's low. Uh, we did match the July 18th low at uh, 1671.75, but uh, I think we might sneak down into the 1660 handle. Uh, another uh, trading double bottom there, uh, right around 1666, uh, just on uh, the July 16th and July 17th. There are so many earnings reports here. We're going to get to a few of them. We'll try to cover as many as we can in a second. Let's just first talk about gold here because gold had a very bad day yesterday. Uh, sold off significantly, obviously. Uh, and all the miners were down significantly as well, like giving back some of those uh, recent run-ups that they had had. Um, gold, you can just go a little bit shorter chart just to show yesterday's action, obviously. Okay. Uh, we were up there, and you had talked about this whole 1350 area struggling in, and then we ended up giving back um, about 30, what was it, about 30 bucks yesterday? Well, actually, more at one point in time. Um, we actually got below, is that today's? Well, today we got down to 13.0840. Um, we bounced uh, but, back a uh, bit yeah. today, yeah. But yesterday, yeah. Uh, yeah. just started cascading down and really got ugly there for a bit. Well, that uh, you know, it did take out that resistance at the uh, 1340 level, um, and then we'll have to go to the daily here to point out the significance of that uh, that 1350 level. Uh, you had a high at uh, 48. Actually, you had an exact double top in that stock from uh, from Tuesday and Wednesday, 4870, 4870. 
Uh, and then also you had the high just around that area at 1351.20 in June. Uh, pulled back. The, was major yeah, hurdle. 13, yeah, major hurdle. Uh, still just, you know, got an eye. Did take out yesterday's low, but it just, just seems like it's going to sneak back down to that that 1300 level which uh, was the old resistance and all of these gold miners there got murdered there yesterday too after having a great run up here you look at a stock like newmont nem stock got as high as 3141 just two days ago yesterday topped out 3105 and boom crashed down to 2909 giving back two bucks on the day did bounce 50 cents towards the end to close at 2961 but it was a major reversal for the miners yesterday so they had a few days of relief for all these guys that have been long and you know they're starting to love the miners again and then just completely in one day it basically gives back uh you know a good third of the run-up that it's had um i just want to just going back to the facebook here uh marty just put his two cents in and uh he just thinks that you know the stock's just been holding up here since around seven o'clock and he's thinking it's being pumped up by the big boys that dump their holdings so uh you know he's kind of jumping in with our yeah marty is uh he's listening to the show too much he's going with our conspiracy theories yeah there's a lot of conspiracy (laughs) theories there but it's so hard to fight that momentum like will top i didn't pull back here eventually here today so i mean is it overdone i think it is is, but I don't know where that top is. It could be at 33 and a half. It could be at 32.72. We might be, you know, well, what's the pre-market high? Just so he has a reference. 32.98. 32.98. That's yep. the reference price right now. Obviously, with 30 cents off there. So I mean, when stocks start making, or not 52, we call the new, uh, the, the, the intraday high. When stocks st- stocks start making new highs, um, I don't want to be short them. So 32.98 is the reference point I would use if I'm trading this thing right now. And obviously it starts taking out 33 and then. But a lot of times you see them go up a nickel and then pull back through. So sometimes it's better to play it as it comes back through that level too. Let's do a few of these earnings reports. There is a ton of them. We'll try to cover the main ones. General Motors reported earnings here. Making new 52-week highs again this morning. Um, it's just momentum, man. These things start going and they hard to break. $0.84 cents versus $75. $39.1 billion versus $38.37 billion. Top line beat, bottom line beat. Stock up, uh, stock is traded up at 3815. Uh, it's pulled back a bit, trading 3770 right now on 222,000 shares. Right, 3815 uh, has been high in the pre market. Big move uh, for GM here. We have pulled back. Uh, this is keeping the back of our mind. Uh, you know, Ford did get that big bounce off the earnings and stuff. And I believe I was checking it. The uh, the pre market high was like 1765. Went to 1767 during the regular session. Yep. So that was a good reference yep. point. 3815 is going to be your reference point here in uh, GM and early trading. And I believe this is uh, the stock hasn't traded up near this level here um, since. February of 2011, and then the all-time high reissued stock. It's uh, 39.48, but uh, not not within striking distance, uh, at least here for the next couple of days. And I also read, and I read something in the Detroit Free Press today that the U.S. government needs 95.51 to break. Come even on, on. <laughs> yeah. How do they figure yeah, that I mean, out? How, how? Well, they dumped a bunch. They dumped oh, a bunch yeah. at a loss. Oh, yeah. yeah, they took a loss. 95, yes. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I thought they were already breaking even. They were saying on CNBC. No, or... they took a big loss. They oh, took a big wow. loss and dumped a bunch around 32. Uh, so, so uh, uh, that's, an, that's crazy talk. $95 on this stock. Maybe it'll see 40 one day. But <laughs> 38.15 is was... your reference point here. <laughs> Joel, you make a great point. These pre-market highs and lows, we keep reiterating this to you. That's what we're all about is letting you know the pre-market highs and lows because very few market participants use that information and that is valuable information like you said yesterday with Ford uh, just ticking two cents above the pre-market high of the day and then uh, obviously pulling back a bit GM that high 38.15 so keep those pre-market highs and lows in mind when you're trading these stocks because they can be used as reference points when you're trading obviously it takes them out that don't work all the time but they do work some of the time Joel here. Uh, let's go on to a couple other ones. We've got Bristol Myers BMY also reporting earnings here this morning. They uh, came in line, 44 cents versus 44, 4.05 billion versus 4.05 billion. So in line on the top, in line on the bottom. Stock is just offered down and trading down about 60 cents here right now at 44 bucks. Offered 43.95. Uh, just looking at that one low of 43.53, which was back on July 19th, just three sessions ago. What's your take? 
Uh, that's a, that's a good call here. Not do I mean it's down 59 cents in the pre-market, so uh, just real spotty trades under 5,000 shares have traded here. So keeping an eye, I don't doesn't look like uh, we've already traded through 44. That's the low. Had a 44.14 low. That was uh, three days ago, but uh, it continues to sell off here. Looking at that 43.83 number, and the clock. Stock did close on its lows, uh, pretty weak here. So I think if you sneak up that 44, 45, 45, 51 uh, yesterday's low, you should find some pretty good offers. Okay, that stock's too boring. Let's go on to something that's moving. Baidu, B I D U, ported earnings a dollar twenty six versus a dollar twenty one, one point two three billion versus one point two zero billion. They're increasing their third quarter sales guidance, and the stock is trading up nineteen dollars here this morning another one that's got a ton of momentum and the momentum is continuing anybody that is short this thing is pounding their head against the wall right now because the stock continues to go up despite uh the valuations being a little bit lofty 17 percent more is tacked on to the price of baidu this morning ah boy I, <laughs> 133.08 was the high that you had on um uh going back on um, where was that? Oh, I that made it today. right in the pre-market. Yeah, that was today. 133.08. Oh, sorry, 133.59. Yeah, and then it, it got back above. That was the initial spike, and then it got to 133.59 again. So I'll just point that out as resistance point because uh, if this thing doesn't keep going up like it is, I, I'm not even going to try and pick a support point here. 128 uh, was the low that you had uh, in the last 15-minute bar. So. I would consider that minor support. You did have a couple of toss back in July of 2012. I'm going back to you had a high back on the week of the 17th of August in July of 134.71, and the week of the 24th of uh, August uh, in 2012 of 133.96. So you did have a couple of tops there. Uh, you got to go a little bit further than that to the monthlies there, Joel, to find those couple tops I'm talking about. But, you know, you start getting up here, we're getting into areas that we haven't traded at in over a year here. So, obviously, it's in breakout mode. We saw, you know, sometimes it can stall at these numbers, but a lot of times momentum just continues. This is the momentum market, and sometimes it continues to go through these prices, too. So, hard to step in front of a rocket ship and try to stop the top. Joel, we also got... a. Uh, ton of other ones reporting. Where do you want to go? That's pretty much the question here. We can go to Qualcomm if you want, which is QCOM. That stock reported last night and is trading up on 478,000 shares. It's up $2.71 uh, this morning, $1.03. Versus a dollar oh three, but the revenue was great, six point two four versus six point oh five. And they're raising full year earnings per share and sales uh, guidance here this morning or last night, and the stock is uh, trading up here at four percent on the report. You got uh, you did uh, get a high sixty four fifty five, and the next bar only got up to sixty four forty five. So perhaps someone's targeting uh, the sixty four fifty level as resistance. So. If you're looking for a target here um, from the pre-market activity, there you go, 64.50. Uh, looking at the stock a little bit longer term here, going to the dailies, can actually find some resistance on this thing. Uh, you have traded up, haven't been over the $64 level uh, since uh, May when you made a high at uh, 64.58. So there you go, got a good level to look at there. In Qualcomm. Under Armour, which is symbol UA reported earnings, and it's flying here this morning too. Again, these stocks that have momentum, these stocks that have been climbing for the last year are continuing to be the ones that outperform the market. And Under Armour is uh, up here and making new 52-week highs again this morning, trading 66.90. They beat 16 versus 14, uh, 455 million versus 448 million. The numbers don't seem like that great to me. It doesn't matter. It's got momentum and it's flying here. And the stock is uh, just ticked up to 67 and a quarter, which is a new 52-week high. Yep, uh, and it's new just hugging high, up I think, here. Too, actually. Yeah, it hit uh, it hit that 67 and a quarter. Has only been able to pull back uh, 35 cents since hitting that level. Uh, so we're using 67 and a quarter here. And you said 
going to the longer term chart, yeah, I believe that's an all time high for the issue. Yeah, I think sixty five fifty five back on May twenty second was the new that was the old all time high. So obviously that number could be used, you know, as maybe support here now if it starts to pull back in. But wow, it's got momentum going. You just got to remember, when they start to turn, they can turn quickly too. But right now, a lot of these companies just continue to break out. Um, there's just so many to go. Let's go to Crocs, because this will be a fun one for you to talk about, Joel. We've uh, Obviously, um, it's an interesting company here, and it's down 24% this morning. Oh. Yeah, just getting absolutely murdered. The numbers were terrible. 48 versus 60, bottom line miss, top line miss too. And they see uh, earnings per share in thir third quarter at 20 to 23 cents. Estimates were up at 39, saying everything wrong here, Crocs, this morning. And it is trading down significantly here in the pre-market. <laughs> Wow, I guess uh, those shoes uh, for adults is not catching on here. <laughs> uh, kind of have a, uh, you know, I don't want to call it a rounding bottom here, but you've heard the $13 level initially after the news was released. And since uh, trading under 13 here, you've only been able to get to 1286 So I think uh, the stock down 24% um, in the pre-market. Uh, someone is targeting this uh, $13 area to uh, to cover some shorts. So. I don't think I'd be shorting it at 13. If you can get above there, you might get a little bit of a rally. Uh, this stock, trying to look at the weeklies here. This it was a good buy back in 2007 at 79 cents. <laughs> if you yeah. want, you want to find some good news here. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. We had a low point. Got to go way back here to find the 13 dollar level. Uh, 13.04 uh, was a low back in December, early December 2012. Uh, that's kind of coinciding here with the pre-market levels. So uh, 13, I don't know. I'm looking at October here too. October, you had a couple of lows in the week of the November the 9th and the next week, the November 16th, you had two coinciding lows of $12 right on the kisser. That is 90 cents away from here, but I just watched the stock fall four bucks. I think it could fall another 90 cents. It could happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could happen. And there might be some buyers down there in that whole $12 wow. area, but um, this is a stock. <laughs> It's the whole thing. Cheap stocks get cheaper in this market, and expensive stocks get more expensive. That's just why the market works. You can say, oh, valuation-wise, well, you know, these, the problem is sales are shrinking. Uh, they're not, you know, going to probably make the money that they did in the past, and that's why it's coming down. And you got these momentum stocks, these growth stocks that just continue to break out. I mean, look at the charts of Biogen and Celgene, B-I-I-B and C-E-L-G. Both of those companies report earnings here this morning, B-I-I-B. They blow the numbers away. Stocks are making new, uh, well, Biogen just ticked up to a new 52-week high, BIIB, in the pre-market here. Uh, it got up to two, well, the high was 242, I believe. Um, and I believe it just got under there. Do you got the pre-market chart there, Joel? Grab the pre-market ah, sure. chart, and we'll just take a look at what the high is today. I don't know if it quite got there. Well, 245, yeah. So it did. It ticked a new 52-week high here in the pre-market. Um, but if you put this chart into perspective and look at it, Two years ago, this was a $60 stock. It's now 234 and people are like, well, it's got to stop sometime. Well, uh, I don't know where it stops, though. And obviously, you know, the company is, uh, this is one that actually does make some pretty good money. And uh, biotechs are hot, and they've been hot for the last year. And hot stocks continue to get hotter. Yeah, it's pulled back hard off that at that level uh, that it hit 245 in the pre-market. So, but you still, hey, you still may get a shot. I'd still use the 242.64, the former all-time high uh, as a as a solid resistance point. And Celgene, just quickly look at that one too. It basically just moves up every time Biogen's moving up. It seems like, and Celgene are trading up another four dollars on their earnings. They uh, beat the uh, earnings to a dollar fifty two versus dollar forty four, and they'd be on the top line as well. And that stock hits a new all time high here too, one forty two eighty four in the pre market. Has pulled back a little bit too from those pre market highs though. Right. So we'll be uh, we'll be using that one forty two eighty four as our first point. Uh, it did settle right at its old all-time high here, 138.77. Uh, so another, uh, you know, come back down another uh, another two bucks there. Or excuse me, another less than a buck to fill the gap, though. So keep an eye on that 139 level. Uh, if it holds that, you could slide back down to the close of 135.99. We are running dangerously short on time. Um, just check. There's like 300, 400 companies that are reported here today and some major ones still that we didn't get to, like Las Vegas Sands, uh, Dow Chemical International Paper. 
Uh, 3M reported we didn't get to. Hog we didn't get to. There were so many earnings reports we just couldn't get to them all. Um, to reporting tonight is Starbucks and Amazon here. Uh, maybe you quickly just want to look at those two charts because obviously those are going to be the big guns here tonight. Maybe start with uh, the Amazon here because Amazon uh, obviously has taken out the $300 level just a few days ago. But then on yesterday's weakness closed below 300 for the first time in about a week and a half. What's your take there on the Amazon technicals going into the fundamental earnings release here tonight? Uh, you do you're finding some good support here um, right around 29804 that was yesterday's low so I'd keep an eye on that uh, after spending you know one day above 300 uh, below this 29804 you had that big up day uh, with you had a low back down at 286 so trying to lock in profits here still trading up a little bit in the pre-market with the spoos down so keeping an eye on uh, that that uh, 29804 low and then uh, looking at Starbucks, I believe that stock has been on a yeah little bit of a little bit of Pull a back pullback now from the whole seventy dollar area topped out a big hole number couldn't get through it. Right, uh, do have a number I do like here on the downside for Starbucks. Uh, you hit uh, sixty six uh, thirty uh, yesterday. Um, you had a four day low at sixty five eighty two. So let's call that whole $66 level uh, support. You're trading a buck above that, uh, so let's uh, let's keep an eye on that 66 if you're trying to protect profits in Starbucks. Overall market thoughts before we close the show here, Joel. We've kind of drifted up. We're six points off the low right now and six points down on the day, so kind of hanging out in the middle in of middle. the after hours and pre-market range here. Uh, which way are we going to break? Are we going to try to make a break for those highs, or are we going to continue to drift down and retest those lows? I don't know. We got a little bump off the durable good news, and uh, that's taken us right up to yesterday's low at 77.5, and, and that also coincides uh, with the, uh, the mid-range on the day. So I'm looking for us to, in order to rally back into that uh, 1680 handle, uh, we got to hold this off the open, make a rally, I'm still looking at this as kind of a lower risk short here at the 50% retracement. Uh, coming back on the downside, that 71.75 number uh, coincides with your five-day low, uh, but below that, you got to be looking for all those sixes, uh, 1666.50 and 1665.75. That's our show for today, guys. Have a great trading session. We'll be back at you tomorrow.